Welcome back to Boomer's Playground, and today we'll be going over coding exercise 61 from the Colt Steel Web Developer Bootcamp on Udemy. And this is the second to last coding exercise that there is. I do not think there's any other coding exercises past this since the rest is server-based, and that's a heck of a lot harder to test, especially on a client-based platform like this. So, all right, let's get over 61. We're doing forms and events. Um, so it looks like there's a couple keyboard events. Um, there's a new version, a new version, and an original version. So prevent default. Um, I hope through the three you learned at least one of them. Um, but let's go through it. So time to get some practice working with forms and events. Um, the HTML file already has some stuff, blah, blah, blah. And it contains an empty unordered list and we're gonna append some allies. Um, watch the GIF at the bottom for an overview of how your code should work. Okay. Oh, neat. Okay, so we add something, how many, and then we wanna show the amount and the string. All right. Okay, so we have the action of nowhere. <laughs> And then when the form is submitted, prevent the default behavior. So um, hopefully you pick this up in one of these three things. But when you have a form, you usually have an ID on there. But since we only have the one form, it's really easy for us to just grab the form. Oh, and see, <laughs> they even do it for us. And so what we can do is we can do form.add event listener, and we can do a submit listener, which this is going to be when you submit the form. So if you look at the HTML here, we have this form and then we have a button. And even though it says submit, the name, the text doesn't really matter. The fact is it's a button in a form. So its default behavior is to try and submit this. So here um, we have a label, we have an input, and the input has an ID, and this input has an ID as well. So we have a product, and we have a quantity. All right. So I'm starting to kind of start to put this together a little bit here. So let's do. Okay, so we got it like that. All right. So when you submit the form, which means when you click this do stuff, this is going to submit, and then we want to grab whatever's in here. And we want to grab whatever's in here. And we're lucky enough that both of these IDs have, or sorry, both, both of these inputs have IDs. So this should be easy to grab. So we have a product and we have a quantity. So again, only when it's submitted, which means you click on this button, what we want to do is we want to get we want to get the quantity, which will be document.query selector and product and quantity, so QTY. And again, you could have used um, get element by ID, but like I've told you many times before, I, um, I just like to use query selector because I do. <laughs> All right, and we got that and we got product. So now we should have both of those things. <laughs> Um, oh, that's your previous exercise. Sorry, guys. All right, and we need to, so we're going to create a new element, set the text on the LI to include the quantity and the product name, and then append it to the UL. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. So, all right, we got this. I kind of jumped the gun on this one. Sorry about that, guys. We really should have done the, uh, the pseudo code like always. So number one is get, uh, well, we have the form above, sorry. So two, listen for submit. Number three, prevent defaults because the submission or the submit of a button will refresh the page. So we actually need to do E here and we need to do E dot prevent defaults. I think that's what it is. Okay, so it's just no S, just the prevent default. 
All right. And this right here, this can be anything. Some people put event. Um, you could put Udemy. As long as it matches, all it really is is just a parameter like anything else with functions. So um, this line right here, we are preventing the browser from refreshing. OK. All right, so we're going to prevent the defaults there. Number four, grab product value. We'll do number five, grab quantity value. Number six, um, let's see, create li, add quantity and product to li. And number eight, we are going to append li to the UL. All right. So, all right, so we're listening for the submit, which is this. We are preventing the faults, which again, this can be named anything. I just, I'd like to do obnoxious names so that it's really clear that it can be called whatever you want it to be, more or less. There are some reserved keywords, but for the most part, um, you can name this whatever you want, as long as it matches down here. And then, so once we hit the do stuff, this runs. So we stop it from refreshing. We grab this element, and I think we need to do value to get it, because it's an input. So this will just give us the input itself. When in actuality, we want the value in the input. And then let's do li. So now what do we have to do? We need to create an li. And so that would be document.createElement li. And then we don't need to grab the ul only when we submit it. We can grab it early. So let's just do, we'll just grab the ul up here. We can get document query selector and I had an ID of list, which is awesome. And we got a spell right. And so here again, I just use query selector because I like to, but you could have used document um, that get element by ID. But now we have the UL. And so here we are submitting it. We're stopping it from refreshing. We're getting the value from the quantity input. We're getting the value from the product input. We are creating the li. So now we just want to do li.inner text equals, and I'm going to do the back ticks so that I can interpolate. This is called an interpolation. So it wants us to create a new li, set the text of the new li to include the quantity and the product name from. So we'll do quantity, we'll leave a space there, and then we'll do product. And so now that's the li, and now we should be able to do ul.append child li. So let's see if that works. So product, we'll do, um, super awesome JS course, and we need 100 of them. And we get 100 super awesome JS course. So this does look like it works. So let's uh, check the solution, see if the test passed. All right, the grossly, the grocery list should reset the form inputs after the form is submitted. Okay, so Oh, yep, looks like I skipped the last part here. So um, we need to uh, set this and this back to nothing. So luckily, we have them here. I think we should just be able to do this. So let's see if that will work or not. So we got quantity, we got product. All right, let's, uh, let's do um, crappy YouTube JS course. And you guys need a billion of those. 
and we got that but these guys did not go back hmm let's check the solution all right so we're still getting the same error um okay so let's um how do we reset input value jazz see what we get here to clear the field without having to delete the whole thing blah 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 all right so yeah something dot value is going to equal all right cut 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 i don't need you guys seeing all that shit Okay, so that didn't clear those out. Um, hmm. <coughs> Cut back in. All right, so that didn't work. That did not clear them out. So let's, huh, I'm trying to think. Um, let's see, um, re, set input value on click js and let's see what we get here all right blah 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 oh so apparently there's a reset option which is interesting or okay so okay so that looks like it should have worked huh all right well let's try the reset let's see what that does um, all right, so we can do, let's see, yeah, so we just grab that thing and then we'll just do reset. I don't think this is going to work either, but I think it's because I'm just grabbing the value. Oh, you know what? Yeah. All right. Well, let's just try it anyways. Um, uh, PS5, I will do 10 of them. All right, so that still didn't erase them, which is fine. And I think it's because here I'm getting the value already, so I can't, um, this is the input element. And then when I do this dot value, I'm actually getting the actual value and I can't reset that, right? So let's do this. All right, so now I should be able to do value and that'll be, and that should be good. And that should be good, but these won't work, but let's see what they do just for fun. We'll do one and you'll see we get the actual elements themselves when I really want the values in them. So now let's do um, discord with a 10 and that works. And it looks like these finally got um, reset. So the biggest issue was up here, I was grabbing the dot value. And so when you do that, you can't reset that because you need to set the value on the input element itself. So let's see if that dot reset worked. Dot reset. I've never seen that before, to be honest. And we'll do um, Corvette and let's get 10 of them. Okay, so that did not seem to work. So you have to do it on the value. All right, let's do it again. Let's do um, R8, I'll do 10. Oh, that didn't work either. All right, well, I'm not sure why reset doesn't work, but I thought that would be kind of cool. That, again, that's something I was not aware was a thing. Huh. I don't know. We don't have to really worry about that. Let's just go and we can get on to uh, just go how we had it. And this should work. And let's see if the solution passes. And it does. Perfect. So... Um, this one was kind of fun. This one is 
I think this is more realistic to what you do on like a day-to-day -day basis than pretty much anything else in these exercises, but it's all good to know. And this is also why it's always so important and why I stress so much that um, you need to be building projects, right? Because you're going to, this is how you kind of get into the stuff. So um, this one was pretty tough. I hope you guys learned something. Um, again, if you have a form, you can just grab the form and you can listen to the submit, which uh, that's kind of nice because, you know, hell, that means we know we're submitting that form. Um, we're stopping the browser from refreshing, which actually let's, let's remove that. And then we'll see, um, we'll do an R6 and we'll get a hundred of those. And so, yeah, see, so this actually tried to refresh because we did not prevent the default, which this stops it from refreshing the browser. So now we're passing again, possibly. Yep. And I mean, this needs to refresh again, but that's beyond the point. Um, so yeah, so that passed. So we're listening for submit. We grabbed the UL and then only once the form is submitted, we're going to grab whatever was in quantity. We're going to grab whatever was in product, or we're actually going to grab the elements. And then we're going to create an LI. We are going to add the value that was in the quantity input. And we're going to add the value that was in the product input. We're going to put those in that LI. And then we're going to give the LI back to the page so that it shows up on the screen. So um, this one was a little tough. There was a lot of moving pieces for this. If you guys have questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below. Otherwise, like, share, and subscribe. And I'll catch you guys on the next exercise.